our workforce here has a very vast, wide, diverse skill set um, across the information warfare domain, um, things like communications capability, uh, network administration, cybersecurity, um, artificial intelligence, and uh, data science. Winning the information war, that is the vision of the Naval Warfare Information Center, also known as NIWIC. It's home to the Department of Defense's top scientists, engineers, and technicians. The organization's history dates back more than 45 years with connections to some of the Navy's first electronic systems and information technology activities all along the East Coast. Over time, the mission name and locations have changed in order to keep up with ever-changing technologies, budgeting constraints of the DoD, and needs of the warfighter. In February of 2019, the NIWIC Atlantic name was applied, changing the organization from a system center classification, formerly known as SPAWAR, to an information warfare center. The change represents the expansion and increased focus on cyber for not only the or organization, but also the Department of the Navy. In this Military Heroes of the Month, I received security clearance from Quantico to show you what these incredible men and women do every day to keep the military and U.S. citizens safe. 5,000 people make up NIWIC's total command, ensuring they are on the cutting edge tip of the spear to engage the warfighter. Two of the biggest challenges NIWIC faces are ever-changing technology and the skill set of the workforce. And we have to stay at the very cutting edge of technology to do that in the areas of information warfare, command and control, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, artificial intelligence, cyber, all these different areas. NIWIC is involved from the very beginning of the process, imagining what a certain technology might do to help a warfighter in their mission. It's imagining what could be and then prototyping and experimenting on what that technology does. Starting with equipment, NIWIC's manufacturing engineering sector has grown exponentially over the years. We have additive, subtractive, and advanced manufacturing equipment. So additive being 3D printers, subtractive being your traditional machine shop equipment, and then advanced being everything that's kind of like computer controlled CNC equipment, those higher level uh, manufacturing pieces. The manufacturing lab's journey began in 2018 with only one printer making between 10 to 15 parts in that first year. Now they have 15 3D printers and 12 subtractive machines. They have done almost 8,000 parts so far this year. One of the largest machines you can buy was at work while we were in the lab. They were doing what's called nesting, where they're printing multiple parts on the same build plate in an effort to save time. For instance, on this machine, they were able to 3D print thousands of masks and face shields during COVID. The key to our success here at the On Demand Manufacturing Lab is our people. We have an amazing team of engineers and technicians that are innovative. They also have a cutting edge machine where they ingest a 3D model and the computer tells it things like how thick the material is, what the alloy is and what you're trying to get it to do. They gave us a demonstration. Each of the clicks you hear is the sound of it piercing the material and the dragging sound is it pushing the material through it as it goes. As the head tilts, as opposed to just spinning, it starts cutting the edge. It will do up to four inch thick titanium, but it can also do other metals, plastics, polymers, and more. It's a fifth decimal point accuracy, so 100 thousandth of an inch, give or take. A human hair off your head is only three thousandth of an inch, so much finer. So you should be able to grab it now. And so fresh off of the machine, this is what you're looking at, and so you can feel kind of the sharpness of that as it goes oh, through. Yeah. But you can also, if you look at it really close as you go through on the sides, you can see where the path changed and the direction of that water as it goes across. But that's your finished part. That's awesome. <laughs> and from in the lab to actual implementation. We work with the vehicle integration folks a lot. So we're doing a lot with uh, kind of the vehicles that you see going up and down the road on a regular basis, doing sheet metal components, but also printing for all the communications equipment that goes in those vehicles. The Expeditionary Warfare Department focuses on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, and making sure the users can securely and effectively communicate while also having situational awareness to what's going on in the field. You're looking at the testing of the electromagnetic and radio frequency system NIWIC has integrated into the vehicle. It spins to get different angles of the radio frequencies, essentially, to characterize the full platform across the electromagnetic spectrum, making sure that the users can uh, securely and effectively communicate and also have situational awareness to what's going on in the field. The Expeditionary Department does about $828 million worth of work.
The Test Cyber Forensic Center is where they do all types of testing regarding the electronic systems. Those take place in what's called an anechoic chamber, meaning free from echo. My team's job here is to ensure that every electronic system that is to be installed aboard a Navy ship aircraft or vehicle operates to its peak performance. They basically infiltrate the system to find problems, mitigate the problem, and find a solution. So how do you guys go from testing uh, in a room like this where there's obviously no outside interferences to then putting it on a ship where there's going to be all kinds? Right, so that, that's the basis for our testing. So we, we test for all that gamut of frequencies that we can predict that it's going to be um, adhered to when it's installed. So when it's install, hopefully those, those situations won't arise. The team at IWIC is passionate about what they do and they make it a mission to try and empower the next generation of students. Just the opportunity to be able to go in and work with the teachers, but most importantly be able to work with the students. To see the students engagement to where they ask questions, to where they, and then also to where they come in and request to, hey, how can we interact and be engaging and be able to work here at Nautica Atlantic in the future? They have also printed about 4,700 3D puzzles that they give out at different school functions and community events. And those at NYWIC say as technology is ever growing and changing, it's neat to see so many students already interested in the field. It's funny, I mean, I don't feel like I'm that old, uh, but you know, kids now have 3D printers at home already. So a lot of them are pretty well versed in, in kind of what you can do with 3D printers. So a lot of times when I'm out there, I'll ask, hey, what do you use your 3D printer for? And we get some really interesting answers, you know, everything from, from kind of toys and, and small things, but, but kids are getting exposed to engineering problem sets and ideas a lot earlier. So it, for us as engineers at this command, it's really exciting to kind of see um, just more access to some of that. And I was basically a student for the day. You saw that in the video. They let me keep my memorabilia. Those at NYWIC have impacted 42,000 students in the Tri-County area and held more than 40 STEM events. Not only are they gearing up for more school events, they also have three weekend events this month at the USS Yorktown Reading Day, the Somerville uh, Sweet Tea Festival, and Girls in Aviation Day.